to die, you see. <laughs> Got quite a lot on tonight, haven't we? Yeah. Anyway, councillors, it's seven o'clock, so I shall say good evening and welcome to the meeting of the Planning and Licensing Committee. Please note that this meeting is being streamed Hello. live to the Hello. internet. Please could all meet members ensure their microphone is set to mute unless they are speaking. It is important to remember that you may only speak when called by the chairman. Also ensure any other device nearby are switched to silent mode as they can be distracted. <coughs> Members should use the raise hand button when they wish to speak. When it is your turn to speak, I will call your name and invite you to speak. Once you have spoken, I will flatten your hand. All votes will be taken by roll call. When the name of each member is read out, they must respond with either for, against or abstain. I will only accept amendments to motions via the chat function so that this is clear to everyone what is being proposed. Thank you. Secondly, as chair of this committee, I would like to make a statement for the benefit of councillors present at this meeting and for the members of the public. The applications before you and indeed any applications you consider in the future must be considered on planning merits only. It is essential that members adhere to this principle and ensure that their decisions are based on the papers before you and any information provided to you during this meeting. This is not the forum to discuss any ancillary issues relating to the planning applications before you. We shall mo now move on to another statement. Members will note that item eight on the agenda and item three on the supplementary paperwork has been withdrawn from tonight's agenda <coughs> at the request of the Chief Planning Officer. Members will have noted that the request makes reference to flood risk and need for more information. In anticipation of this matter being addressed, Unfortunately, the information sought was not addressed, the request sufficiently, and such the Chief Planning Officer considers that further time is required to explore these issues. I have agreed the request have been considered with the advice of uh, the Chief Planning Officer. This item will be considered by the committee in the new year. Thank you. Moving to the agenda, apologies for absence. Thank you, Chairman. We have apologies this evening from Councillor Ian Mayers and Councillor Terry Mullard is his substitute for the evening. Excellent. Welcome, Councillor Mullard. Item two, declarations of interest, councillors. I trust our sound uh, box is removed. There's none there. Sorry, Councillor Keane. No. Councillor Trelaw, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, just a voluntary interest in regards to the uh, McDonald's application. Um, my son is he goes to um Cheriton Primary School, which is just a stone's throw away. Uh, so on the on the next block or so. That's all. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Trelaw. Any other councillor? No, moving on. Item three, minutes to consider and approve the correct record of minutes of the meeting held on the 17th of November. Are they agreed? Agreed, agreed. Excellent, thank you. Item four, minutes of the licensed subcommittee to approve the minutes of the meeting of the licensing subcommittee on the 10th of November and the 23rd of November. Are they agreed, councillors? Indeed. Thank you. Turning to the applications, we're going on the order of the supplementary inf information sent to you uh, last week. So item one of that will be five, Castle Hill Avenue Hive, 21295SH and Miss Izzy Hills is going to take us through it. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, firstly, I have an update. Um, and several new points have been brought to our attention by a neighbour earlier on today. And the points were emailed directly to all members of the planning committee. Uh, many of the points raised have already been addressed within the body of the report. Others, such as the style of the report, are not relevant to the determination of this application but I will address the material planning considerations raised here. Um, the first point that was raised, this statement is incorrect and the heights are as stated within the officer's report. With regards to the second point, the committee report states that eight neighbours were notified. However, letters were actually sent to seven neighbours with one address being repeated in error. And um, to the third point, the application is a section 73 application. 
which if granted results in a new permission. As such, members are required to consider all material planning considerations, including parking. Um, with regard to point five that was raised, paragraph 7.8 to 7.11 of the report, consider the visual impact of the development on the host property and wider street scene from the front and the rear of the property in line with policy HB8. With regard to point six, as stated within paragraph 7.15, the application proposes to retain two parking spaces. And with regard to point eight that was raised, officers do not agree with this statement. The council has a duty to work with all applicants and agents as set out within the MPPF. This involves offering pre-application advice and discussing potential amendments where necessary on applications. Thank you. So in terms of the application, this is at Five Castle Avenue, which is a residential property located within the settlement of Saltwood. And here you can just see the location of the property. So the application is retrospective, section 73 application for the variation of condition two of a 2019 planning application, which granted planning permission for the erection of a two-storey side extension, single-storey front and side extension, and single-storey rear extension, along with the rendering of the first floor elevations of the property. Section 73 of the Town and Country Planning Act 1990 allows an applicant to seek to vary their planning permission by means of amending or removing a planning condition. It is the local planning authority's responsibility to determine if the proposal is minor and if the proposal is acceptable. There is no set definition of minor and this is a matter of fact and degree and each application must be assessed on its own merits. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, this application seeks permission for the increase in height of the single storey rear extension by 0.375 metres and for the whole of the first floor east elevation to be finished in white render. And the following slides are just some photographs of the property from a recent site visit. This photograph here is a view of the development from the neighbouring property, number three, Castle Avenue. And then here we've got the original scheme, which is shown on the left, and the section 73 drawings are shown on the right. Officers consider that these amendments to the original scheme do not result in any adverse impact in terms of visual amenity, residential amenity, and on parking and highways. Thank you. Sorry, apologies. I see. Um, I, I thought he was carrying on. Apologies. <clears throat> Councillors, we have uh, two speakers on this uh, application. First being Julian Saunders, a local resident, speak against the application. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you, Chairman. I've got a video to share with you for this one. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the adjacent neighbours to this property and object to the application. Firstly, we say that this is not a minor amendment as required by Section 73. It is true that it relates to a private dwelling and not a major industrial construction, but the departure from the permission, applied for and granted, has had a major effect on the appearance of the rear of the property and, in our submission, should be dealt with by way of a new application for planning permission. Although Hythe Town Council has no planning authority, they unanimously agreed that this application did not comprise a minor amendment. That was the opinion of a committee of elected representatives, and it is this planning committee of elected councillors who must decide whether the correct procedure has been adopted. Our second point is that since we made formal complaint about the breach, the work on this part of the property has continued apace. 
One would expect that where a breach of planning permission had been identified and acknowledged by the developer, work on that part in breach of the permission would be halted whilst the new application to amend was heard. In this case, the work has been accelerated almost to conclusion and it appears that someone or something has given the applicant the confidence to assume that his application will be granted. This causes us concern. Thirdly, you will have seen the photographs provided and been able to compare them with the new scale plan submitted. It is readily apparent that the plan does not show the extent of the breach and seems intended to make it appear less severe than it is. The plans show an increased height of the extension of 300mm above the brick line, whereas the actual construction is at least 675mm above that line and not yet at its final height. Allowing for a 75mm coping stone, the final construction will be 2.5 five times the height shown on the plan. We cannot say that this discrepancy was intended to mislead the committee, but there was a real danger that without the photos, that could have been the result. We suggest that this alone justifies refusal, as there is no certainty as to what the application is for. Finally, the Local Places and Policies Plan makes provision for matters to be considered before an application for an extension is granted. There is no time to detail all provisions, but Policy HB8 provides that extensions should seek to reflect the scale, proportions, materials, roofline and detailing of the original building and should protect the residential amenity of the occupants of neighbouring properties. Flat-roofed extensions should be well designed and subordinate to the building. Extensions should respect the character of the host building. In this case, we say that the extension as built does not comply with any of those criteria. The extension is a large white block that obscures a large part of the original building and dominates the back of the house. The rendered blocks are totally dissimilar to the original brick appearance. The difference between the original balance plan and the reality of the extension is stark and, in the words of one Hive councillor, ugly. We ask that this application is refused. Thank you, Mr. Saunders. Our next speaker is John and Paula Triffitt, applicant to speak on the application. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you for the opportunity to share some information about our planning application. Our planning application was granted on the 27th of November 2019 and included a rear extension. Ceiling height inside the house is approximately 2,450 millimetres. For the rear extension, our architect and builder decided to install a warm roof construction as the research we made led us to understand that a warm roof construction was environmentally better, providing a greater level of thermal insulation for our home, which was important to us. As a result, the roof height is very slightly higher than other alternative construction techniques. The parapet around the flat roof is approximately one breeze block in height above the flat roof, meeting the building regulation standards. From our understanding of the town and country general permitted development order, had the rear extension just been proposed on its own, it would not have actually required planning permission. There are other extensions within our neighbourhood that have a higher roof height and cover a larger footprint. It is our view, therefore, that the rear extension as built is acceptable and the changes to the extension as previously approved are de minimis and not such that warrant a refusal of planning permission. Oh. The extension is built approximately three metres from the boundary of number three and 4.5 metres from number seven. Therefore, there is no loss of light or overshadowing which would impact the neighbours to any unacceptable degree. The extension is single storey, so does not give any loss of privacy and does not overlook their properties. The roof height has no material impact upon the neighbours and is within permitted development limits, meaning that planning permission is not normally required for this. Planning have approved the installation of a roof light on which the flat roof minimises artificial light in the home and combined with the solar gain from it will lower the amount of heat required in that part of the house, therefore reducing our energy consumption. On another point, there have been comments made about a perceived intention for us to use the flat roof as a balcony. A warm roof construction does not allow the roof to be used as a balcony. The roof light takes up a fair amount of the roof space and we have no stairs up to or door from the first floor onto the roof or any guardrails. 
therefore eliminating any possibility of using the roof as a balcony. After concerns were raised about our build, the senior planning enforcement officer made a site visit and our construction was found to be within variants of the building plans. We hope that this has clarified our position regarding our house build and why we feel the planning permission variation should be approved. With that in mind, we would ask the committee members to support their planning officer's recommendation and permit our application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, councillors, open for debate. Councillor Jim Martin. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, <clears throat> um, I uh, chair the uh, Plans and Works Committee at our uh, High Town Council, and uh, we objected to this uh, because we don't feel that these changes are minor. Um, now, uh, the truth be told, uh, we had had a succession of, uh, like this, retrospective uh, uh, applications uh, to vary uh, planning permissions, which had already been built. Uh, so I think that the, uh, that the Plans and Works Committee was a little frustrated uh, in uh, uh, playing catch up with uh, a lot of uh, buildings around Hyde that have been built and then the um, Section 73 uh, application made. Um, but the, the reason was singularly uh, because we feel that this is not minor uh, and warranted a new application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Hollingsby. Thank, oh, my, my video is so close to my um, uh, sound button that I'm always put to, uh, turning it off, so I apologise. Um, right, OK, well, I think, um, thank you for uh, Miss Hills for clarifying the letter from, uh, I think it was Mr Holt, Holt, Holt uh, anyway, whoever it was that we received a letter today. Um, I was very interested in reading that and and obviously reading all the all the reports. Um, I think I, I have to agree with our planning officers. I do feel that it is a minor alteration. Now, if, if, if our planning officers can tell us different, well, I'd be interested to hear. But from what I've read and from, from what Miss Hills has just said, it does seem to be a minor um, uh, amendment. And therefore, and, and, and I suppose what I, I just wanted to check on the height, the discrimination in, in the height, which seems from the person who spoke, the video that we received, the comments uh, on, on a, uh, an email and also the officers. If she, if she could just confirm that the height is as stated in the amendment, then I would be happy to move the, the recommendation. Uh, Miss Deffy or Mr Lloyd, would you like to answer that? Um, yes, I'm happy to answer that. Um, obviously, following the, um, the email that we all received today, which I know you have all seen, um, I asked Miss Hills just to double check everything and along with her line manager, we have gone back over the file and checked all the measurements again and um, you know, we're quite happy that the measurements that are in the report are the, the correct um, measurements. Um, I, I've also asked Miss Hills whether there could be um, an issue regarding land levels here, but as you'll see from the photos, um, I don't think that that is the issue. I thought perhaps, um, you know, one side of the site was higher than the other or something, but I don't believe that's the case. So um, I can't find any evidence to um, support uh, the neighbours' concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Can I just come back? Can I, there's one other. Yeah, carry on, uh, Councillor Hollingsworth. There there's just one other um, um, point I'd like to just confirm with Ms. Dethia that she's, she's satisfied that this is a minor amendment. Um, yes, I'm more than satisfied that this is a, um, a minor material amendment. Um, as, um, as we've tried to um, make clear with this application and, and with all Section 73 applications. The thing to bear in mind also is that this does actually result in a brand new planning permission. If you were to grant planning permission for this tonight, um, as Ms Hills pointed out, you would need to consider all the material planning considerations that you would have considered in the first place. Um, it results in a brand new planning permission with brand new conditions. So in terms of the considerations, it's not 
um, really any different to had they put in a full planning application anyway. But in terms of um, whether or not we can consider it under Section 73, um, I'm, I'm more than happy that having, you know, cons we consider this day in, day out on other applications. Um, and I know that uh, the chief planner has also um, commented to the uh, neighbour that has raised this previously um, on this matter. Um, and, um, you know, we're well aware of all the case law on this and we're, we're more than satisfied that it, it's um, appropriate. Thank, thank you very much. And therefore, I move the recommendation, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Hollingsby. We have a seconder. I'll second, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Collier. And it's Councillor Wimble to speak. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I'm very hesitant on anything that's retrospective, especially when it comes to height levels. Uh, if it was the height of the whole building, I certainly wouldn't have been backing it because I think that's something that... Uh, planners should get right first time round. However, looking at the plans, it does just seem that they've gone for a higher ceiling and admittedly it is um, higher than specified in the original planning, but uh, I'm happy to go along with the planning officer's recommendation um, purely because they know the legal position probably better than most of us on the committee. Thank you, Councillor Wimble. Councillor Mead. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, too, do not like retrospectives. They knew exactly what they were supposed to um, have been allowed to do, and they've gone and done something else. And I never like that. We have it quite a lot on town planning. I don't like retrospectives. If you know you're going to do something, make sure that you get your application in first and you've got the tick in the box. Um, I'm still very concerned because this neighbour uh, who sent the video through has stated very categorically heights. And this seems to be going against what we're seeing in this application. Um, have, could I ask the officers, have they actually spoken uh, to this neighbour uh, to query where he actually got these heights from? Because if it is going up um, to over 600, um, I, I think we have a problem and that's probably why the neighbours um, are actually, and I think they've lobbied us all, I've been lobbied by several uh, on this and are obviously very concerned about this. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Mead. Um, Mr Lloyd, you want to come in and, and just say a few words on perspective planning commission? Mr Lloyd? Chairman, yeah, good evening councillors. I think Nobody likes retrospective planning applications, but I think just be clear, we need to consider them irrespective of the retrospective nature. That plays no part in our decision making. I'm sure you're all aware of that, but I'll just say it for, for reminding purposes. Um, in terms of what is being proposed and what is built, you're being asked to consider what's on the plans and what has already been built in those pictures. Um, it, it's not a case of the plans, the plans will match now what is being built because it is, has already been built. And Miss Hill's um, presentation sets out the relationship of the finished building with the neighbours. I'd have to defer to Miss Hill's say if she's actually double checked with the neighbour as to where he's got his measurements from. But I think the key bit on this picture shows it quite nicely is that is the building. Um, and we can see the relationship between that building and the neighbouring properties. And as Miss Hill's report sets out, it's a good distance away from neighbours. It will not result in overbearing or overshadowing. It's not going to get any taller. And we can control the nature of it being a veranda or balcony, notwithstanding the fact that it does have a roof light in the top of it and wouldn't take load bearing. Um, so I think what we need to be considering tonight is that building there because that will match the plans that are in front of us. Thank you for that, Mr. Lloyd. Any other councillor indicating to speak? In that case, I have one proposal, proposed by Councillor Hollingsby, seconded by Councillor Collier to go over the officer's recommendation. Um, over to you, Ms. Uh, Kate Clark. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Brook. Four. Councillor Collier. Four. Councillor Fuller. Four. Councillor Goddard. Four. Councillor Mrs. Hollinsby. Four. Councillor Keane. 
Abstain. Councillor Jim Martin. Against. Councillor Philip Martin. For. Councillor Mead. Abstain. Councillor Mollard. For. Councillor Trelaw. For. Councillor Wimble. For. Thank you. That's nine for, one against, and two abstentions. Hey, Ms. Clark, thank you, councillors. That's uh, approved. Moving on, councillors, on number two on the supplementaries, 2005-31, Free Tanners Hill, Hive Kent. And Mr. Rob Allen's going to take us through it. Good evening, Rob. Thank you. Evening, Chair. Thank you very much. Good evening, members. <clears throat> um, this application is for the proposed construction of a three-storey block of six apartments with parking, amenity space, uh, bin and cycle stores following the demolition of the existing dwelling and garage and the removal of the uh, conifer trees along the northeastern site boundary. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Um, the application... Oh, uh, Excuse me. The application site is a tapering piece of land on a steeply sloping site within the defined settlement boundary of Hythe, uh, approximately 50 metres from the eastern, den, eastern end of the High Street. Next slide, please. Um, there's a vehicular access in existence from North Road uh, to the north of the site and a pedestrian access from Tanners Hill to the east. Uh, the North Road access is uh, relatively open in character and is shared with two properties to the west, 5 and 7 North Road. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, to the eastern boundary is a ragstone wall, which you can see this picture, with shrubs and hedging up to the line of the rear of the property, which then is replaced by a central bank of conifer trees. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we can see the conifer trees here from, from within the site and the uh, very sort of strong uh, barrier they do, do currently present. Uh, next slide, please. The site contains a two-storey detached house, which is of Victorian or Edwardian uh, vintage, uh, finished in render with uh, applique timber um, and with some barge board detailing. Um, next slide, please. It's, the, it's a view from the uh, southeast of the site, looking towards the uh, rear of the property, which looks south over towards Hythe. Next slide, please. And uh, this is looking uh, toward from the northwest to the southeast, looking at the uh, western elevation of the property. Um, next slide, please. To the south of the application site, uh, we can see one Tanner's Hill here, a three story. Um, Edwardian uh, Victorian building also uh, that is currently utilised as a care home. Um, next slide, please. Adjacent to this is one to eight Lindens, a three storey block of flats. Uh, and next to this, next slide, please. Uh, numbers one to eight Springfield, a four storey block of flats, um, finishing a very contemporary style. Next slide, please. Existing dwelling um, and number five North Road have a relatively close relationship with five North Road at a higher level than the application property with windows in the rear and side elevations, which you can see here that look into the garden area uh, and which are visible also from the garden area of Three Tanners Hill. Uh, planting and soft landscaping exist along the common boundary, provide some screening uh, with a silver birch within the neighbouring garden uh, being um, very obvious in this respect. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is view looking uh, northwest towards number five. Uh, this is the existing boundary. Next slide, please. This is taken from just immediately adjacent to the side wall of the property, uh, three Tanners Hill, looking up towards uh, number five here. We see the uh, silver birch tree and some of the existing uh, greenery there. Uh, next slide, please. And this is looking up at the side elevation of number five from through the garden three, from the driveway of three Tennis Hill. 
Next slide, please. Um, for the properties to the south, uh, which is, I believe, Linden's, um, immediately to the south, mate, there are already clear views of the rear areas of the building from the existing property and grounds. Next slide, please. As we can see here from the rear garden area of the, of the application property. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as stated, the proposal is for a three story block of six two bedroom apartments, uh, which would occupy the site, as you can see on your screen, uh, together with seven parking spaces, which is one space per flat and provision for one visitor space, um, bin and cycle stores, both within the grounds of the property. Uh, next slide, please. Here we can see the um, plans of the uh, various floors of the building, which are virtually identical. Um, the main entrance to the proposed building is located on the first floor, which is accessed via the car park on the northern elevation. And the secondary entrance to the building is located on the ground floor, which can be accessed via the pedestrian ent entrance uh, on Tanis Hill. Uh, next slide, please. Here we can see some elevations of the property as proposed. Uh, next slide, please. Um, here we can see the, the property as proposed. This is a uh, notional sections through the site. So uh, we'll see here from the, the top image shows the view from uh, Tanner's Hill with the blue outline being the existing property. Uh, from the north, um, the, the, other, the other two sections here, here's what's seen from with the street level in place on the sort of left of, your, of the image. And on the right is uh, section BB taken slowly, slightly lower through the site. Uh, taking through the ground level so you see the building in its entirety so not what you would see when looking from north road uh, next slide please uh, here's a bit of additional information showing how the building would be uh, sort of set into the site it's built on the more or less the existing sort of level part within the site um, and you can see on the side there the uh, position of five um, tanners hill up the slope um, next slide, please. Uh, it's just a final slide, just a, a render of the proposed building from Tanner's Hill uh, with the proposed uh, tree screen uh, in place, obviously at maturity there, um, and less the conifers that uh, exist on the site. Um, all the material planning considerations are set out within the officer's report, and it's considered the proposal would be in a highly sustainable location, uh, would represent a good design that would contribute positively towards the character of the street scene and also the conservation area, with a modest contribution uh, toward the council's five, identified five-year supply of housing land being made. Um, as members will probably have noted from the supplementary sheets, the outstanding comments of KCC highways and transportation have now been met and the land stability issues addressed uh, with a recommendation for approval subject to conditions. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Um, just to uh, before we go to the speakers, um, Councillor Keane has. I'm sorry, has... Chair. Yes, she's trying to get back in. She's also trying to phone him, but she doesn't seem to be able to get in. Excellent. In that case, we will. Um, Councillor Keane has experienced techni technical issues. We are therefore going to pause the meeting for three minutes to allow Councillor Keane to disconnect from the meet, meeting and reconnect. Please, please could all members turn off the video and microphone for this period. The clerk will advise when the three minutes have expired and the meeting continue. Thank, Thank you, Councillors.
Um, and I think Councillor Keane might have joined us by telephone. Is that you, Councillor Keane? Yeah, hi, I'm back in. I don't know what's happening. Zoom's just not working at all on my pad. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Keane. Glad you're back with us. Um, is everybody back? All councillors, I can see, bobbling up. Excellent. So now we will go to our speakers, first being Mark Powell, local resident, speak against the application. Thank you, Gemma. Good evening, I'm Mark Powell. I'm objecting to the uh, development of Three Tanners Hill. I have three reasons for this. One is the building size. Um, it's a large site, but the concentration of the building is in one area of the site, meaning that it has to be a very big building to accommodate the, the six flats um, which are proposed. This making it a three-storey uh, building with a pitched roof. This will stand out in the skyline uh, and be an overbearing feature um, on, on the hillside of, of Hive. Planning Dock 7.11 says it would uh, have little effects on the Tanners Hill residents, and I agree, but the proposal extends the building westwards to straight onto the boundary of 5 North Road. Therefore, a building this high um, with a pitch roof will dominate views from numbers 5, 7, 9A, 9B and 11 North Road. I agree that there are three-storey blocks of flats below in Dental Street, uh, but they are much lower down the slope and have a flat roof. So they're nowhere near the, the same uh, impact on, on views and they don't stand out. Finally, in a previous application, the Shetway L Landscape and Urban Design Department stood against the development saying, the size and style of the proposed building is inappropriate for this location and represents underdevelopment, overdevelopment of the site, excuse me. The implications of this type of increase in density for the town and the conser conservation areas um, are not needed. Uh, I note that there hasn't been any input from this department in the latest application and wonder why. Moving on to number two, the traffic. Uh, the uh, Tanners Hill North Road Junction is a dangerous um, junction. Figure 16 in section seven shows a modified photo of the entranceway to the site. On the right is a new brick um, pillar needed because the wall was destroyed and rebuilt after a car drove into it. So it's a very real issue. Um, now with a, an, an increase of 200 to 300% of traffic exiting the site into that junction, it will become more dangerous. Traffic management in a conservation area uh, will be required. Um, strangers to Hythe um, are surprised by that junction. Residents of Hythe are wary of the junction uh, and dither on the junction, which again makes it a difficult place to be and is, is ready for traffic management. Uh, lastly, in our climatically con uh, concerned times, it is a complete anathema to me why we should accept felling trees to park a car. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Powell. Next speaker is applicant's agent to speak on the application. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for allowing us to present our proposals this evening. Our application is for the proposed construction of a three-storey block of six apartments with parking, amenity spaces, bin and cycle stores. To achieve this, the demolition of the existing dwelling and garage will be undertaken, along with the removal of conifer trees along the northeastern boundary. The site to be developed lies northeast of High Town Centre and sits within a highly sustainable location. The development itself will bring with it a small increase in the local population, which in turn will produce a corresponding increase in spending and vitality to the local economy. The existing dwelling, which we are proposing to demolish, dates back to the Victorian period, but has on, undergone a number of unsympathetic additions and extensions over the years. The property itself and any of the assets within the site boundary are not listed, and in the wider heritage context of the BE3 and BE4 conservation area, the dwelling does not represent a comprehensive heritage asset worthy of preservation or restoration. The proposed three-storey block of six apartments has been sympathetically designed to the area in which it is situated in. The mass of the building has been considered to work with the existing gradient of the site to allow for it to sit well along North Road and Tanners Hill amongst the neighbouring properties. 
As there is a broad range of materials used within Hive, the contemporary scheme adopted materials such as red brick, standing seam natural zinc roof, dark western red cedar, timber fins cladding, and dark grey aluminium windows and door frames. This choice of materials has allowed for the proposed scheme to aesthetically blend into its surroundings while still maintaining its dominance. Throughout the application process, which commenced in February 2020, we have negotiated at length with your officers from the pre-application stage through to the submitted planning proposal to ensure that the proposed scheme is suitable for the area in which it is located in. Further enhancing the positive comments raised by Robert Allen, the proposal is in a highly sustainable location, representing good design that will contribute positively towards the character of the street scene and conservation area, with a modest contribution towards the council's identified five-year supply of housing land being made. Whilst objections from local residents are noted, these are not considered to amount to a justifiable reason for refusal. We believe we have addressed the concerns raised by the town council through further jurisdiction jurist justifications of the design and submitting a transport statement which has further developed the design of the vehicular junction into and out of the site. We would like to thank your officers for the detailed and concise assessment of our proposals and also for their recommendation which is to grant and we hope that members will be able to support officers in their recommendations. Thank you Chair. Thank you Gemma. Councillors, Councillor Jim Martin. Uh, thank you, Chair. Sorry to uh, jump in again, but um, <laughs> uh, at Hive Town Council, we um, we um, uh, objected to this. Um, uh, although it's listed as over intensification, it's really the massing is it's a big lump uh, of a building, uh, and and it will show. You know, it will it will look like a, a you know our view was there was just too much building uh, there. Um, well, I'm delighted to hear that uh, from the applicant that the uh, road junction has been further uh, amended uh, because we all know that that is a lunatic, dangerous junction. I mean, and the, the, the proposals that we've got, I, I don't see it modified hugely, that, that that is a significant risk to anybody coming down the hill in particular, but going up the hill because everybody boots it up that that that's the particularly steep part. So everybody sort of guns it up that hill. It, so that is a very, very, very dangerous junction. Um, we felt that the architecture on the eastern uh, side, so the, uh, the side away from the road was very poor. And uh, all of the neighbours will be looking at, uh, you know, a, a, a very poor elevation. Um, but um, I'll, I'll just we local knowledge here. The sewerage system in Tanners Hill is terrible. It is always clogging up. There is always a problem with it. So uh, uh, town councillors were very concerned that putting, you know, an additional five dwellings onto an already overstressed sewerage system is going to just, you know, exacerbate the problems. But I think uh, primarily um, uh, the loss of of the mature trees is a real issue, um, uh, the habitat that it, it provides. Um, and I know uh, that I've, I've since been lobbied by uh, 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 particularly the, um, the residents uh, of, the, um, of the home uh, about the screening, the, the, the screening between the properties and around the properties are of a very, very, very real concern to people. So, so that in a nutshell is, is what our uh, High Town Council's objection is. Thank you, Chair. And Councillor Martin, thank you. Uh, Councillor Wimble. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think it's a very exciting looking building. Um, Hive is full of great architecture from um, over several hundred years. You can go from Georgian Victorian. Um, we've got the modern spate of, uh, as we saw in the presentation, there are some quite dynamic modern buildings as well. Um, I think if it's falling within planning uh, legislation, which it appears to be doing now that the few issues have been met, um, I can't see any reason why we can't uh, go along with the officer's recommendation. So I'm happy to move that we do so. Happy to second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Philip Martin. Thank you, Councillor Wimble. Uh, Councillor Hollingsby, did you indicate to speak? I didn't, but I will. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was just going to ask Councillor Martin. Um, no, perhaps I won't. 
um, I, I mean, I agree with um, um, Councillor Wimble. I think I think we have to be realistic about some of these these buildings, and it seems to me that this fits in really well. The issues that were raised by Hyde Town Council, I personally think, have been addressed, and therefore I I really cannot find a reason for actually turning this application down um the i mean it's very difficult in terms of highway i think we all know north road is a very narrow road i mean i go along there quite often as i have a sister who lives just just um just off uh, of north road so i know it i know it very well and i know this site very well and actually i think uh, if you look at um the photographs in terms of the, the 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 building that you can actually see on Tanner's Hill, it's it it, it goes down quite considerably, and and it, I don't think that that is overpowering. So I'm very happy to second the uh, officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Hollingsby, and apologies. It looked like you you was going for your microphone. That's why I indicated to speak. Uh, Councillor Mead. Thank you, Chair. Um, again, a little bit worried about some of this. I, I just feel that trying, I know the original application uh, in the application history uh, was for more apartments and that was withdrawn. Um, but I do feel that trying to put six apartments on the space of one house um, is, as uh, Councillor Arthur said, it's going to look like just a, a block. Um, I always ask about local knowledge when it comes to the sewerage. Uh, we've had this problem with the garden centre here in Folkestone that I raised many years ago um, and it's still flooding uh, when we have uh, heavy rains even though we were told it would never happen um, and we find this time and time again we must be able to call on some local knowledge for this. Um, I do know that junction up there and it is lethal um, I totally agree with Councillor Martin on that. Um, I think possibly some more work uh, around the road safety aspect um, of the planning uh, needs to be done. But I'm very concerned um, about the loss of the mature trees and also the hedging. Um, because under policy HB1, it says requires development to make a positive contribution to its location and surroundings. Well, those trees are actually very iconic on that road uh, and I think just going in and cutting them all down uh, will certainly not uh, actually be en enhancing it or making a positive contribution. Um, I'd be interested to hear what other people think. Thank you. And Councillor Mead. Councillor Fuller, good evening. You indicate to speak. Yep, sorry about that. I lost my unmute button. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I drive up that hill regularly, and uh, it's you really do have to belt it up there if you, you know, and you, you know, um, and then suddenly you hit that junction, and you, you know, you you all, sometimes you have to slam on the brakes. It's just not safe at all. Um, I mean, I'm kind of in two minds on this. The, on the one hand, I'm not I'm not convinced about the safety of the junction. I think it, it's going to cause some kind of uh, increased risk in terms of an accident on the other hand um i mean th this council obviously is trying to encourage people to use public transport um that particular location is within a minute and a half a, a slow paces walk of a bus stop so i don't actually really see why they're putting putting in these parking spaces and if they didn't put in those parking spaces they could retain the trees um which are lovely trees and i so I think if they, if, weirdly enough, if they've come forward, forward with an application for that particular property, which is not beautiful, but I could deal with it, but hadn't bothered with the parking and had kept the trees, I think I'd be minded to support it. Um, as it stands at the moment, I, I can't. I'd have to object. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fuller. Councillor Trelaw, good evening. Thank you, Chair. Um, I bet you all, I cycle up that hill. Um, uh, I guess I, I, I <laughs> I've got electric. It's all right. 
<laughs> but uh, a small child in the front, so it, uh, yeah, <laughs> offsets it. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, sim similar concerns as to others that have been raised here. Um, you know, I think it's, it's quite a subjective, um, everyone seems to have a very subjective view on, on what is sympathetic to the conservation area, because I, I see that and, and just see it as sort of a bog standard out of a brochure kind of development. Um, and perhaps too big and dominating for that site. Um, clearly the traffic issues um, are there as well and the biodiversity. I appreciate that in the report, um, it stated that there's an opportunity to plant more diverse species. Um, uh, but, you know, whether, whether these things are followed up or not. I also have a, um, a query for the officers um, about the EV charging points on the site. Um, I wasn't sure whether it was clear that that was a a condition or not um, in this particular application. Um, maybe if an officer could, could clarify that for me. Um, yeah, uh, that, that, they're my main concerns. I'm a bit undecided on this one. Um, it doesn't seem to be sort of a, a necessary, you know, the, the size doesn't seem to be entirely necessary and, um, you know, uh, it, it is quite dominating. Um, but yeah, they're, they're my concerns, thank you. Mr. Allen, um, can you answer those questions, please? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, in response to Councillor Trelo's query about the EV charging points, yes, on the supplementary sheets, uh, there is a condition requiring um, them and uh, also the how, how they are to be, uh, the, the specification they have to meet, that, that came directly from KCC Highways and Transportation. Um, if, if I may, with regard to the general queries about the, the junction, um, I think it's acknowledged it isn't a particularly good junction in the scheme of things. Um, the applicant and the agent uh, produced um, a transport assessment and, uh, of, the, of, the, um, of the junction in accordance with the guidance from Kent County Council, who um, reviewed it and they are comfortable with it for, for vehicles uh, who are coming up the hill and turning left obviously to to enter north road that the, the displays that would be made available um would match the the sort of general travel speed when they there was a survey carried out and i think the um i don't want to misquote but i believe the the average sort of speed going around the corner was 12 miles an hour which meets the visibility displays that have been provided and which would be secured for by a condition um as regard the the conifers um, on the eastern boundary, uh, they are very prominent, um, and uh, it wasn't, you know, without uh, careful consideration that the their removal was um, in the eyes of the officers anyway um, considered acceptable um, because they are extremely dominant. And as they get taller, they are gradually dying out. And the lower branches um, are not looking great. They within the um, arboricultural review and report and they're graded c1 so they aren't a high quality tree i mean the fact is and it also responded to other people's concerns uh, councillors concerns uh, specifically the last person was councillor Schler, worrying about the diversity of the site um, that will actually um, form part of a condition if permission were to be granted that um you know the the, the species for a, a range of species would be um, increased um, subsequently with uh, different planting and councillors may have noted that some some letters of support were submitted um, in, in respect of this aspect of the scheme because um, the trees themselves are quite overshadowing for properties on the opposite side of Tanner's Hill. Um, I think that's I mean, as also, in sorry, in terms of there was a query about the care home residents, uh, I had to contact one of the councillors um, and there is actually proposed to be sort of a, a planting sc scheme along the southern boundary, um, which would um, augment what is there uh, with more trees actually being put in. Um, it is noted that on the end elevation of the care home, it is, it is a, a gable that faces the site. But um, uh, I think uh, that answers most of the questions I'd heard thus far. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Annan. You happy with that, Councillor Trelaw? Yes, yes, thank you, Chair. Lovely, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Annan. I've got Councillor Philip Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a point really which hasn't been touched on at all. We mustn't overlook that this will provide much needed housing. 
and that's why I'm supporting this. I like the look of it. I think we've got we've got the modern facilities with a, a semi-traditional approach on the building, and I think it will fit quite well with the street scene. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Mullard, good evening. Now let's... Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? No? Yes, no, yeah. You're Take yourself off mute. Terry. You're on mute, Terry. Take yourself off mute. That okay? Is that okay? Yes, that's good, Terry. Yeah. Carry on. Right. Um, yeah. In a previous life on a parish council, I do very much respect what parish and town councils um, say on, on all matters, not just planning. Uh, however, um, Hyde Town Council are the only consult consultees um, to have objected. All the others have not objected, Kent Fire and Rescue and um, even the um, Arboretum, Arboriculture um, people. So my feeling is, and looking at the plans, looking at the pictures, I think this is a good addition or a good change. So I will vote for that. That's all. Thank you, Councillor Mullard, and welcome back, Councillor Keane. So back to a full... Uh... Full contingent. Any other councillor wishing to speak? Councillor Brook? Hi, um, a question for the uh, officers through the chat. I just want to confirm, um, could you, I'm, I'm trying to see, but it's uh, really difficult because um, uh, it's remote. Uh, the number of EV points there are for this development, the actual number, uh, the amount, and also just to confirm that it's great that we're increasing the uh, biodiversity and species of the trees, um, but will that condition be robust, um, that the trees being planted are semi-mature, so a reasonably mature tree rather than just almost uh, saplings. I just, just needed to double check that. If that's all good, then, then I will be supporting this. Thank you, Councillor Brook. Mr. Allen? Um, to take the second question first the trees um any, any submission they sorry let me start again they've submitted an indicative landscaping scheme for what you know the broad outline of what they would do if the mission were to be granted this is the applicant and the agent and if the mission were granted there is a condition on there and we would have to subsequently agree the um, details of those conditions with, in conjunction with um kcc ecological advice service um, as well as to ensure that they are a of appropriate species and uh, appropriate age. Uh, I mean, part of the, the sort of ecological proposals um, are that you have species of different ages, so that um, because at different ages they provide different levels of cover and, and different sort of um, habitats for for different species. So um, yeah, a variety of ages will be required for that. Um, as regards the EV. Um, charging facilities uh they uh sorry kcc being they um highways and transportation have viewed the number and they're, they're happy with with those and have uh, the condition that they've requested on the which i think i put on the supplementary sheets um they are requiring for sort of details final details to be submitted and they have given us sort of details of those because um uh, it's mode three standard providing up to seven kilowatt which um not, not being a an electric vehicle owner it's, it's a, you know i'm not au fait exactly with the full technical specifications but um it does does meet the approved um charge point um sort of list that, that, that they would require and they, we'd have to confirm that with them so the, the number um and uh, uh an actual specification of those are is proposed to be secured by condition Hey, Mr. Allen, are you happy with that, Councillor Book? Uh, when we're talking about conditions, I do, I do like them to be a little bit more specific. 
Um, but as it's still going backwards and forwards with KCC, and I'm sure that with your delegated authority with um, the conditions for the trees, I'm sure um, that you'll make sure that those trees going in will be of a reasonable maturity. Thank you. And Councillor Book. No other councillor wishing to speak. I have one proposal proposed by Councillor Wimble, seconded by Councillor Philip Martin to go with the officer's recommendation of approval. Um, over to you, Mrs. Clark. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Brook. Four. Councillor Collier. Four. Councillor Fuller. Against. Councillor Goddard. Four. Councillor Mrs. Hollinsby. Four. Councillor Keane. Against. <coughs> Councillor Jim Martin. Against. Councillor Philip Martin. For. Councillor Mee. Against. Councillor Mullard. For. Councillor Trelaw. Against. Councillor Wimble. For. Thank you. Seven, four, five against, no abstentions. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Clark. Thank you, councillors. Moving on, obviously, item three is, is gone. Item four, two, zero, zero, nine, eight, three, FH, Tesco Car Park, Cherrington High Street, Folkestone. And uh, apologies, lost that bit of paper. Uh, and Izzy Hills is back to take us through it. Thank you, Izzy. Thank you. Um, just to start with, we do have an update. Um, so we've received six additional objections to the application since the report and the supplementary sheets were published. However, these objections do not raise any new points to be considered. This application concerns the erection of a freestanding McDonald's restaurant with a drive through facility, car parking, landscaping and associated works, including customer order, to order displays, goalpost height restrictors and play frame, relocation of the existing recycling area, click and collect and trolley bays associated with Tesco. Um, and this is just the location plan just to show where, where the site is situated. And then the application site consumes the east of the existing Tesco car park in Cheriton. The site is bound by Cheriton High Street to the south and the Cheriton interchange to the east, which leads on to junction 12 of the M20 to the north of the site. And Cheriton interchange slopes upwards to the north. And then the following slides are just some photographs to show the location of the application site um, and the neighbouring developments as well. And this block plan just shows the proposed site layout that's been submitted to us. And then next slide, please. Um, and this plan just shows the proposed development. And the existing motorway embankment is proposed to remain as a green buffer and officers have negotiated with the agents to secure an enhanced land landscaping scheme within the site, including a total of 14 new trees, new areas of specimen shrub planting, formal hedge planting, and planters to the front of the store. And then next slide, please. And then just to show the proposed floor plans that have been submitted. So the restaurant is proposed to be located on the ground floor 
with additional kitchen and staff areas to the first floor. The next, next slide, please. And these are the proposed elevations that have been submitted. Officers were able to secure the inclusion of first floor windows to the east elevation, which faces onto Cheriton High Street. We note this is a controversial application. However, the planning considerations for this application are the principle of development, sustainability, design, layout and visual amenity, residential amenity and well-being, lighting, highway safety and archaeology. As the report explains, the development is considered would, would have an acceptable impact upon each area of consideration and therefore the application is recommended for approval subject to conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Hills. Thank you. Uh, we have two speakers on this, uh, first being Councillor Shoe, a uh, ward member to speak on the application. Thank you. Good evening. As well as the comments submitted on the planning portal, I've been contacted by many residents who are deeply worried about this application. I'll briefly outline the main areas of concern and grounds for objection. Traffic is a key concern for residents. This area is already affected by heavy traffic and residents are seeing increasing levels of traffic with the additional housing being built nearby. A drive-through, particularly next to the motorway, will surely lead to more traffic which means more noise, more pollution, more congestion. The application is for a 24 hour operation. Mm -hmm. Residents have had experience of this with Tesco's and it was not good. Noise and lights throughout the night, cars racing in the largely empty car park. Unlike Park Farm, this is a residential area. It's unfair and unnecessary to put a 24 hour drive through on their doorstep. Increased litter is another major concern. I note that McDonald's policy includes three litter picks a day. However, I can walk outside my house in Cheriton right now and I'll soon find litter from the existing McDonald's outlets. Litter will end up on the motorway verges as well. A third McDonald's in the town will inevitably mean more litter. Even though the plans include a restaurant accessible to non-car users, I see nothing that persuades me this is going to be anything other than a place people drive to. This flies in the face of dealing with the climate emergency and the active travel agenda. If we allow this application, what does it say about our commitment to tackle these critical issues? Another stated government ambition is to promote healthy eating, particularly in light of the pandemic. I don't intend to criticise people's individual food choices. But whatever the PR and marketing might suggest, we're talking about highly processed food. Finally, it's not an easy thing to say, and I know it's not an easy thing to hear, particularly at this time. But as several of residents have also shared with me, the wider concerns about this application, unfortunately, must outweigh the potential employment opportunities. There's also a concern that local independent businesses in Cheriton already struggling due to the pandemic, will further suffer with a multinational corporation close by. We can support local jobs and a greater sense of community by supporting existing local businesses. I hope you'll consider residents' views when making your decision this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shu. Uh, next speaker is the applicant's agent, uh, Gemma. Thank you, Chair. Good evening. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to provide this statement. We want to use this opportunity to add some detail to the report before you and tell you about McDonald's and how we operate and how we have addressed concerns regarding the proposal. We have worked closely with officers throughout the application process and are pleased with the recommendation to approve the proposal. Given the current national situation, the proposed economic stimulus this proposal will have cannot be downplayed when normality finally returns. The proposal seeks to provide a complementary use to the site in a sustainable location adjacent to the strategic road network. We want to take this opportunity to reiterate our commitment to invest in Pikesville for the long term creating at least 
65 jobs for local people. As a company, McDonald's invests over £43 million a year in staff training. All of our employees have access to a range of qualifications to help them develop, including nationally recognised foundation degrees and apprenticeships. The majority of our managers started serving in our restaurants, as, as did many of our most senior staff. The restaurant will be locally franchised, which will inherently provide additional benefits to the local area. Our teams in Folkestone sponsor the under 10s and 11s teams at Cheriton United Football Club. Both restaurants have a link to the local action on homelessness, helping to tackle homelessness in Folkestone. They have also supported local care homes and worked with the local authority on cleanup events, including graffiti cleaning. We work very hard to make sure the area around our restaurants is litter free. Last year, we launched Keep Up the Clean Up, a litter picking campaign during which we carried out over 450 cleanups, including in Folkestone. Our restaurant team continues to participate in Britain, Great Britain Tidy's Great British Spring Clean, and we recently launched Get in the Bin, a social media campaign encouraging our customers to dispose of our packaging responsibly. Staff at all our restaurants carry out a minimum of three daily cleanups in the immediate area, picking up all litter, not just McDonald's packaging. We have worked hard with officers and Kent County Highways during the course of the application to ensure the proposal before you is in an acceptable form. We have also greatly enhanced the landscape scheme on offer. There are many benefits that the proposed scheme will bring and we are excited to invest in Folkestone in the long term, providing a significant economic investment into the local area, which will provide a range of benefits to the local community. We are pleased with the officers' recommendations and we trust you can now support the application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Gemma. Councillors. A councillor wishing to speak. Councillor Trudor. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. I'll go first. Um, OK, lots of issues from me on this. Um, I think, first and foremost, in terms of um, probably the most valid planning reason to object, um, I think traffic has been spoken about in terms of flow off off the motorway but um you know what about all the traffic coming up horn street i mean i know i know church road um you know very well um i know where you know i know Cheriton primary and the amount of traffic that gets clogged up um certainly around school pick up and drop off hours and you've got other schools further down and we've got new development there at Shawncliff. Um, you know, you've got that one single, that you, you've got that bridge going over the, the railway tracks there. Um, it's just, um, you know, and I can only expect that it being a 24 hour operation, um, you know, that the flow of traffic coming up from highs, um, you know, into it could, could really affect um, those residential areas around there. Um, I can't see the point of putting a McDonald's there when there's another one just down at down at Park Farm. Um, I worry about that increase in 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 traffic. I think the report stated that in one of their surveys, um, something about something like twenty five percent of the car journeys to a McDonald's are for the sole purpose of of going to the McDonald's, and and, and the increase in that that traffic around that area. Um, I mean, I, I, I remember looking at, um, you know, the potential sort of pollution uh, so that drifted over from the motorway. Um, you know, when I was looking at, 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 at schools in the area and, and it, it's, quite, it's quite immense, you know, already, depending on when, when the, uh, the, uh, the wind is, is coming from. But um, just, you know, increasing that level of traffic um you know into that residential area particularly at a time when we are meant to be encouraging a reduction in car journeys um this i keep saying it <laughs> at council but this has come from the government um science and technology select committee um you know they they clearly reported um last year that we need to be discouraging personal car use and so how businesses like this fit into some sort of idea of, of sustainability is is absolutely beyond me um, and particularly in light of, of other points that have been raised in terms of of well-being 
Um, uh, I don't think anyone could could convince me that that this sort of restaurant, um, you know, contributes to to the well being of of our communities. Um, I know we're meant to be discussing and deciding on 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 this application in terms of of planning um, the you know the the MPPS um, but as I think Cal Councillor Shub stated quite clearly um, how can we possibly be considering approving uh, something like this in light of of the climate emergency now the climate climate emergency isn't just some sort of government policy that sits over there and, and that you you include um, you know in your deliberations it really is overarching um, and uh, I, I just can't see how th this is a uh, in any way beneficial to where we want to be as a council especially when we already do have um, a McDonald's just just down the motorway um, that that's about it for me I think I'm, I'm really not inclined to approve this. I don't think we should be approving a business like this. I don't think there's any reason to. Um, I think the the argument about increasing jobs um, doesn't really stand. I think these big businesses take away the, the potential to be on entrepreneurial um, for small business owners to, um, you know, to make, make their way in creative ways. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to support this. Um, and and we'll be voting against the officer's recommendation. And I hope that others considered consider the, these same points that I've raised. Thank you, Councillor Trelaw. Next speaker, Councillor Jim Martin. Uh, apologies, Chair. So, sorry. Yeah, um, uh, thanks very much uh, for coming to me. Um, uh, could I start with a question, uh, Chair, a question to the officers, uh, and then I'll make my comments if, if that's OK. Um, yes, um, Councillor Martin, right, that's uh, great. Mr Duffy will answer your question. Go for right. it. My, my question is concerning the 65 jobs that this development will generate, um, 35 of them being full time. I mean, am I supposed to understand that there will be 35 people there working in full-time employment, 40 hours a week or 37 and a half, whatever, whatever it may be, and an additional 30 people part-time? It just, I mean, this is, I don't think you could get 65 people in that building um, so I, I, I mean, I just, I, I, frankly, I just don't believe that number. That's my question, uh, uh, Chair. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Councillor Martin. Uh, Ms. Defia. Um, thank you. Um, without refreshing my memory um, of the report that comes from, mm -hmm. um, I, I believe that the, um, the statement that's been made um, by McDonald's and their agents. Um, is probably in regard to sort of the wider um, jobs. I don't think it's necessarily that all of those people are on site the whole time. Um, I think it's also to do with the, you know, the additional jobs um, in the sort of deliveries and the supply chain and things. But um, I can I can double check the report if you want me to to come back to you on that. Thank you, uh, Miss Duffy. Yeah, if you can double check then. Um finish off the question are you happy with that councillor martin uh, uh, th thank you chair I, I mean it is much as i suspected which which makes the agent's statement incorrect because he said 65 local jobs and if you're including which they inevitably will have done their supply chain delivery drivers etc cetera, etc cetera, um these are people that are going to be working in other parts of the country and relying on the uh, transport network to to bring the product uh, to the um to the store, but a uh, confirmation of that would be would be useful. My my comments are I suspect going to be much the same as everybody else's. Uh, I'm going to object uh, principally on litter. Now, the issue about litter is they can do three litter picks a day if they want, uh, but this is a drive through. It's a drive 
through. That means people will be taking their packaging and they will be driving elsewhere. Now, I regularly, and I mean regularly, remove loads and loads of fast food packaging from our beach in Hythe that people bring to the front they eat the contents of the packaging and then they try and put it in the bins. I'm being merciful here. They try and put it in the bins and the seagulls extract it. It ends up on the beach and ends up in the sea. So, you know, having three litter picks a day in and around Tesco's car park is not going to address this problem at all. Um, this, this is a product that is going to be driven elsewhere. And particularly during the summer months, it's going to be driven uh, to the front, whether that's in Folkestone or whether in Hyde or whether it's somewhere in our district. And a lot of that packaging will end up on our beaches and in the sea. So, so that is a real issue that I can't get round. Number two is traffic generation. Uh, they, they, they've, they've, they've changed the junction up there uh, 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 over recent weeks. Um, the, the problem is, is now you can't get out of Tesco's car park uh, because of the phasing of the lights, uh, because of the development, as Councillor Trelaw points out, uh, Shawncliffe is, is there now, it's big and it's going to get a lot bigger, but because of the phasing of the lights now, you simply cannot, you have to queue to get out of uh, Tesco's car park. There's a garage there, there's, the, there's the, the, the shop, obviously. If we add in all of the cars from a drive through well, that junction is just going to be you know, impossible to, to, to get out onto, uh, let alone three. Um, and then thirdly, uh, you just cannot ignore the proximity of the schools. This is, a, this is an area of our district that has got a very, very high child density. And we've just got to think what we are inflicting upon our children uh, when, you know, we, 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 we offer them the opportunity to go in and uh, uh, buy uh, fast food. And, and listen, I speak as someone who's consumed my fair share of, of rubbish food. Um, and, uh, you know, I, 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 but I, I have to say that, you know, I, I just cannot in all good conscience um, subject the children uh, to, to, to this this kind of terrible inducement. Um, so, you know, if referring back to a planning condition, that's all about well-being. You know, if we're trying to encourage healthy lifestyles, uh, then uh, uh, fast food isn't isn't part of that, as far as I uh, understand it. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Before I go to the next week, look, Councillor Keane has left the meeting again, so we will have to. Um, uh, pause the meeting again for three minutes so if you can turn your microphones and your videos off and um, somebody will call you back in shortly thank, thank you, you. Um, and I think Councillor Keane has returned. Excellent. Thank you, Gemma. Um, councillors, if you would like to return to the room, looks like Councillor Mullard's done a runner. Um, everybody else coming back. Um, 
Councillor Mollard. No. Uh, Councillor Keynes left again. Um, Chairman, if we just give it to 8.26, which is the three minutes where Councillor Keane initially left. Lovely, I'm thank back you very much. here, if you can hear me. Oh, you are. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to turn my, I think it could be, I'm not going to turn my, my uh, video on. I think that's the problem. Okay, we're all good, yeah? Yeah. I know um, there's an empty chair on Councillor Mullard, but obviously um, his video's on, so he should be there, so it's not my problem. Anyway, moving on. We're not going to wait forever. Uh, we shall go to Councillor Mead. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to reiterate some of the um, concerns already. Obviously, we know about the traffic. We know that very, very close... Um, of, uh, is a primary school. Um, the increased traffic is not only a problem for car owners, it's also a problem for children trying to move around the area. So we need to take that into consideration. The increased CO2, that junction is very, very high for emissions. So we're going to make it even higher. We know from the report that they're looking at a possible 25% increase uh, in traffic actually going through and then on top of that as we've said we've also got um, the new um, uh, development up at Shorncliffe. CO2 we know adversely affects children we should not be allowing this. Um, we've got residents 24-7 do we really need a 24-7 hour McDonald's with all the lights all the noise and as much as they say oh there'll only be 12 cars all of those cars, I guarantee you, will not be turning their cars off when they're in the queue. They'll be sitting there with their engines running. So I believe that under a residential amenity, if not only just for the children, that we should be objecting to this in this area. It's too residential and there are too many children around. Thank you. And Councillor Mead, Councillor Keane. I reiterate what my colleague said. I was in the queue of Tesco's when it took me two hours to get onto uh, a normal road. We were queuing. Um, and I know it ticks all the boxes in regards to planning, but I feel as a responsible council, we've got to look at the increase in litter, the increase in our carbon footprint, and, and most importantly, the health of our young people. Um, I'll be voting against this. I think it's a really bad idea environmentally. Thank you, Councillor Keane. Councillor Wimble. And then I've got yeah. Councillor Mullard. I'm a little bit tied on this one. If it was, if it is just a drive through, then um, yeah, I'm struggling with this. If it was like the one that they have at Ashford on the uh, Babylon Strife Way, um, I can see why it would be a benefit to the local community, especially with the fact that we do have hundreds of new houses just down the road and we're trying to be as green as possible, save them all driving past to go to the one down at Park Farm. There'd be one on their doorstep that they could possibly even walk to. But as it is just a drive through, I really am struggling with it. Um, reference to what Councillor Jim Martin said about the jobs, I know for a fact that th these McDonald's are pretty much off the shelf modular McDonald's that are springing up all over the country at the moment um, and they do seem to be supplying 65 jobs. Uh, lots of the jobs are the sort of jobs that people have as their first job out of school. It's not something you tend to use as a career choice to want to uh, stay with McDonald's. However, having said that, I also know McDonald's do offer superb promotion uh, within the group. Um, 
I would like to have seen it with a seating arrangement so that it was more like the ones at uh, Park Farm and Ashford as well. Um, but again, remind you, we, we can only judge this on planning law. We can't, you know, if the health and safety part of it and the emissions part of it, if that was a concern to the planning officers, then they would have flagged that up. So I'm going to struggle to go against the officers' recommendations. I I really do. I actually find it offensive when people abstain from things because I think that's a coward's way out. So um, although it looks like I'm definitely going to lose the vote, I will probably end up having to back the, the planning officer's recommendation, but nobody's made a recommendation yet. I don't feel that I particularly want to make that recommendation because I can see it is, it's not in my area. So that's not a reason to vote for or against it anyway. I actually think it would be beneficial. I just wish it also had a seating area as well. Thank you, Councillor Wimble. Before I go to Councillor Mullard, um, Mr Lloyd wants to come in. Mr Lloyd. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, there's been a number of very um, valid points made tonight. I just thought I'd like to clarify just a couple. Um, we can only determine this application based on its planning merits. Um, I think that's the first crucial thing. Um, and those have been set out in the committee report, but it's entirely open to members to reach a different conclusion on many of those merits. Um, in terms of the use class, whilst this is a McDonald's, I think it's worth reminding my members that they are, would be, they're considering a restaurant, a two floor restaurant with seating in it and not a McDonald's. It will be operated by McDonald's, but the longer term is it could be anything. So I think we need to bear that in mind. Um, I take the point about the school. It's a 1.4 mile walk away. It's 10 minutes by foot and it's five minutes by car. Um, I happen to have a seven year old and I know the push to go to McDonald's, but she can't go there on her own. Um, and I think that's something to be considered. Um, in terms of the traffic, this has been considered at length by both ourselves and Kent Highway Services. And it takes into account all the traffic generated by the Shawncliffe development and the recent upgrades to the junctions. And on balance, it is felt that whilst there is a 24% increase in traffic on a Friday, Overall, the traffic increase is not harmful to the network or to create increased risk of um, dangerous considerations for people. Um, the climate change emergency is a valid and material consideration to this application, but it is not overriding. It is one of the material considerations that members can take at hand. And I think that that needs to also be, that has been considered and this application would meet the council's requirements in terms of being BRIAM very good and using um, low carbon technologies. I think that's everything that's been raised to date, just to cover a few points. Lovely, thank you for that, Mr. Lloyd. Now I should go to Councillor Mullard. Thank you, Chairman. Um, a couple of points. The first thing is this, this proposed restaurant is not just a, a drive through, it's a restaurant with drive through. And that is uh, emphasised by the fact there are 91 car park spaces within the restaurant boundary. Um, you park there because you're going into a first thing. People have spoken about the Park Farm restaurant. That's a smaller restaurant and um, it's difficult to get to. You it always crowds around. There's always a lot of traffic because people don't go there to go to make generally they go to the other shops there and then nip in the McDonald's. Um, so I would discount that as a competitor. Um, the one in Folkestone, of course, no parking, that's not a competitor. Why is this being built? My mind says it's being built there partly because of the uh, Shawncliffe housing developments, um, but I cannot get away from the fact that there'd be a sign on the motorway saying McDonald's. It's very, very easy to get to from the motorway. And there will be motorway traffic nipping in there from McDonald's. Easy peasy, no problem. Very much easier with the new layout. You don't have to go all the way down in Cheriton now to get there. Um, so it's, it's, if I could get into the minds of the McDonald's people, I'd say they're putting it there to attract M20, um, M20 motorway, not lorries, but M20 cars. 
Um, that's one point that I would object to. You know, you, you don't want to attract all of this traffic. Um, it's uh, I'm not too worried about rubbish. I think that that will cure itself. Um, I'm not too worried about traffic, although I've just said there'd be a lot coming off of the M20. Um, I'm torn, I think a bit like Councillor Wimble, I'm torn. It's not in my ward. In fact, as far as I know, there are no McDonald's west of Folkestone till you get to perhaps Hastings. There's none around, unless Councillor Wimble, Wimble knows of one that I don't. Um, so I live in a McDonald's free area. Um, and on that basis, although my gut feeling is to object, I think I must take into account what the Hive councillors and Cheriton councillors feel, because I think they're more on the on the floor, if you like, than me. I've made those points. I think it's the the um, the M20 traffic. I think that you mustn't overlook. That's all, Chairman. And Councillor Mollard still got five councillors wishing to speak. So hopefully, new information. One being Councillor Hollingsby. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, I've been waiting to, to hear because actually, like Councillor Wimble and Councillor Mullard, I'm, I'm sort of on, you know, I've got a very balanced view. But uh, I think um, Mr Lloyd has actually confirmed some, some things for me. First of all, I wanted just to say that as, as um, and I do say this quite often, as a planning committee, we are actually um, deciding on behalf of the whole district, not on behalf of our wards. And I think that's, you know, really important that we do understand that. Um, I, 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 I do worry about the 24 hour um, business and I just wonder why we have to, but of course that's what they've applied for. So that's what we've got to consider. Um, in terms of, of traffic, yes, of course, uh, there will be additional traffic. But one of the things we're trying to do, and and I and and I've got a lot of respect for Councillor Shuv, and I think she, you know, she spoke extremely well, and I've got a lot of sympathy for her views. Is that we are encouraging people um, to to have electric cars to change to electric cars and we're putting in charging points sort of in new buildings and and wherever we can so you know let, let, and that and that's one of the things that we are doing and you know with, without a doubt people are still going to use cars so if we can encourage them to use electric ones uh, I think that's that's what we should be doing and that's part of our policy um, I just wanted to ask litter I don't think litter is a planning matter unless it comes under environmental health um, so I'm not sure that that should be taken into consideration in, to, in, in deciding this application. Um, I think one of the, re I mean, I, I, I'm not a McDonald's fan. I could probably, well, I couldn't count. I mean, I've probably been in a McDonald's once in my lifetime. That's, that's what I think of McDonald's. If I take my grandchildren out, if they want to go in the McDonald's, they go in the McDonald's and I'll, and I'll sit outside or have a drink somewhere or something else. It's, it's certainly not a place that I would want to go, but I know people do. And I know also that McDonald's are, are and have uh, adjusted their, their menu to, um, um, to provide for more healthy food, should I say. That's what I'm told. That's what I read. Whether that's true or not, who knows? I don't know. Um, but I think one of the reasons I, I believe that they, they want to, to move to here or, or open another um, um, outlet in Folkestone is they think Folkestone is an up and coming place and they want to be here. And should we be encouraging that? Yes, I think we should. Um, I'm still sitting on the fence at the moment and still waiting to hear what other people say. But I think in planning terms, there are very, I can't really think of a planning reason that we could, should be voting against this. Um, maybe, the, maybe the climate change, but then um, Mr. Lloyd has just explained that that's been considered. Traffic, traffic management, highways say that they're satisfied with that. If we if we object on traffic grounds, then we need as a district councillor or, or, or individual councillors to actually put forward a, another plan or we need to get another expert in because if it went to appeal on traffic grounds, we'd certainly lose. So 
I, you know, I think we just we've got to be um, sensible in in terms of in terms of this. Um, so I'm still sitting on the fence, but I'm finding it quite difficult to find reasons to vote against. Thank you, Councillor Hollins. We um, yes, totally agree. Um, I've got Councillor Philip Martin and Councillor Wimble. Councillor Martin, you, you, you're on mute. Can you unmute yourself, please? Sorry. So, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yep, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, you all know what I'm like with technology. Um, I, why, do, why do McDonald's want to come here? Because there's a demand. Now, like Councillor Hollingsby, I have never been a McDonald's fan. I can't admit to only going in there once like her, but... I do remember many years ago when I was on holiday of all places in York, my children then weren't even teenagers and they, they, they've never been McDonald's fans, but we'd arrived there about nine o'clock at night. And you know, in a place like York, it was the only place we could actually get some food, you know, at that time of night. Um, then we've got the, I, I think what Mr. Lloyd said was right. You know, um, there are so many, which, which, which my colleagues are putting forward, there are so many, reasons they're putting forward to try and object that are not valid as far as the planning is there. And that's what we're here to do. Um, I mean, I've heard mention, you know, well, you know, there's one, there's, there's one two miles away, whatever it was said, you know, down at, um, uh, down at Park Farm. Um, we know we've got one in the town centre. That's not a reason to do. Uh, I mean, we, we actually have, I, I mean, we have four Tesco's in Folkestone. I don't remember people objecting to that. Um, and then there was another objection about, oh, well, you know, we should give individuals the chance. Well, we know that it's an international brand and it's an extremely successful and well-run brand. And I'm adding, repeating that I'm not a particular fan. Um, but the, the, the thing is that, um, you know, they, 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 provide, they provide a need. I think also, um, as, as, as Council Holding has been said, you know, they can see that we are an up and coming, uh, we are an up and coming um, area. I mean, we're, we're in the top five still, I think. And that, that's important. Um, we can't be responsible for, you know, the way people eat. I mean, the government bringing all sorts of things, you know, just because it's there, that doesn't mean that, you know, everybody's going to go and eat it and end up, end up you know, becoming obese. Um, I, you know, I really, as I say, I would find it difficult. Um, and, and yes, there's residents close by but they're not next to the building and it's a good space for getting in and out of i i was sorry to hear the council that was reckon it took two hours to get out of tesco's i hardly ever shop at tesco's but i was there the other day and it certainly didn't take me more than a few minutes um so as i say i i mean we, we need the jobs we need to encourage businesses they won't be doing much for a few months even if they get permission obviously um but uh, I, again i would find it very difficult to to vote against this Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Still got five councillors, so um, it'd be good with uh, stuff we haven't covered. Councillor Wimble first, then I've got Councillor Fuller, Councillor Collier, Councillor Trelaw, and Councillor Hollingsby. Thank you, Councillor Wimble. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the comments earlier about the fact that it being on the motorway and attracting motorway traffic, I'm sure if that was the, uh, the customers that the McDonald's chain were looking to get, they would go to Stop 24, where there's plenty of empty units there if they wanted to get motorway traffic. I'll make this a bit easier for some people then. Uh, purely on planning law, and now that I understand that the restaurant is a part of it, um, unlike the rest of you, I actually quite enjoy McDonald's. It wouldn't be the, the one that I would rush to go to. So I'll probably stop at KFC at stop 24 first because it's closer to me. Um, but purely on planning law, I'm, I'm minded that if we all objected to this, one, you've got a few minutes now to start coming up with some legal reasons why we could. But um, McDonald's no doubt would... Um, go to court to try and get that overturned and I can't see how we can uh, object to it. So I will propose that we go with the officer's recommendation, uh, knowing that there's a restaurant there as well, 
I think the 65 jobs alone is reason to do so. And the fact that there's also uh, hundreds of houses being built very close nearby will actually stop those people driving further to uh, get their fast food. I know that won't be popular with some members, but there you go. You've got a motion. If somebody will second that, you can all vote and then uh, go whatever way you want. Thank you, Councillor Wimble. Have we got a seconder, Councillor Martin? I, I will second it, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Martin. And I'll have Councillor Fuller to speak. Thank you, Chair. Um, so we do have planning reasons to object to this. Um, if we believe that there is too much additional traffic, traffic then we can um, oppose it on the grounds of it um, not being sustainable development. Um, and possibly also on the grounds of highway safety as well. Um, now, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, the, 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 the traffic will be fine. It's all going to be lovely. Every, yeah. I drove up to, uh, oh, and first of all, I should mention, uh, uh, declare an interest. I love McDonald's and I'm actually the living embodiment of the reason why no one should eat it because I eat entirely too much of it. And if I could get hold of a double Big Mac later, I would do. Um, I haven't had a chance to try one yet, but leaving that one aside, um, <laughs> I um, I drove up to Tesco's the other day, actually. Um, uh, I wasn't actually specifically going there. I was dropping off some Christmas presents, but on the way back, there was a queue to get in there, uh, and driving around that area is a complete nightmare. And there is a reason that driving around that area is a complete nightmare, and that is because this council decided that traffic would be absolutely fine if we didn't get rid of the existing bridge um, into the Sean Cliff, de Cliff development and replace it with a proper two-way bridge. And we didn't do that. So although none of the existing officers that are talking to this application bear any responsibility for that particular issue, when this council turns around and says traffic's going to be fine, I'm not really minded to believe it. Um, and as I say, as, as somebody that regularly drives up around Tesco, my experience has been um, this council gets it wrong on occasion, as does KCC to share the love, as it were. Um, so I can't possibly support this on those grounds, much as I'd love to have a McDonald's and, you know, five minutes closer than the existing one at Park Farm is. Um, the... I mean, just just looking at the layout of the restaurant itself, just as an example, um, the, the you obviously you have to loop around to get into the drive through. And then if you uh, if as often happens with McDonald's, you are then told, can you just park up for a bit? You there uh, because, the, you know, maybe you've done a big order or they're a bit busy. Then you will literally have to go round back into the flow of traffic to Tesco's. Um, that's coming into their car park in order to get back round to their to, to the McDonald's car park to sit there and wait for your food. Um, and the fact that even that sort of basic issue isn't addressed in the report worries me a bit. Um, I'm not convinced is the is ultimately the, the issue here. And so I would happily propose that we object on the grounds that this is not sustainable development and that um, this will be detrimental to highway safety in the area. Uh, and if you want to attach some planning policy numbers to that, I'll see if I can find some for you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Fuller. Do you have a seconder for that proposal? I'm happy to second. Thank you, Councillor Trelawney. You're to speak next. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to to come back on um, this idea uh, or the fact rather that our climate and ecological emergency motion is a uh, material consideration. Um, I think Llewellyn spoke about um, how they think this addresses, um, or the application addresses this through its build and technology, but how on earth does it um, address the increase in traffic? It clearly is ante antithetical to that declaration and our ambitions to bring down emissions in the district. Now, as part of our climate and ecological emergency work, we have paid, um, we have uh, commissioned a report from Scatter Cities on where our biggest emissions are coming from in the district. And it does come from personal car use. 
And part of our objectives under that um, declaration and that motion is not just to bring our, um, you know, our emissions down as a council, um, you know, through our own estate and operations, but to act as, as leaders and work with partners in the district to bring down emissions um, across the, the district as, as a whole. And, and that includes personal car use. So our district council commitment, um, you know, is to drive lower emissions, lower car use. And despite what Councillor Hollingsby says about, um, you know, trying to, trying to somehow paint that we, or, you know, all our petrol and diesel cars, which new ones of which will stop be, you know, um, you know, being, being made in, in 10 years or so that they're going to be replaced by by um, electric that's just not the gist of of what even you know the government select committee is is talking about um, we're not we're not replacing every every car on the road um, and we need to act you know with immediate effect to not encourage um, you know the, this extra pollution on the roads not just air pollution because it's particulates and all of that that damage the health and well-being of our residents, um, you know, but also also the carbon emissions that that feed into the wider climate crisis. Um, as far as traffic goes, I can't reiterate enough. I, you know, I I I ride my bike up there um, once or twice a day, um, and I'm I'm there at at peak times, and and it's absolutely appalling. And that that Horn Street Bridge is you know, is not <laughs> fit, fit to cope. Um, you know, it, it's a really grim, it, it, you know, it's a really grim situation doing the school run. It, it's just so, so jammed up around there. And I weave in and out because I have a bike, but, um, but you know, on, on the ground, anecdotal evidence is that it, it you know, it, it's already jammed up. Um, I, I'm happy to, to, to help, um, sort of find and, and supply um, planning reasons why we, we should object. I think they're, they're there and that's why I'm happy to support Councillor Fuller's motion to, to go against the officer's recommendation on this. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Trelaw. Councillor Collier. Chairman, <clears throat> thank you very much. I, I uh, purposely um, sat on my hands on this one um, I'd like, first of all, to uh, compliment my wall colleague, uh, Councillor Shub, for an excellent address and representation uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Um, she, she said it all, really. Um, I, I'd also like just a, a, a bit of factual information to um, not so much uh, question what Councillor Fuller was saying, but to, to just um, explain that I don't think that it's actually correct to lay the blame uh, at the door of this council uh, for the bridge not having been widened. I think we fought actually at the time quite hard uh, and made representation to KCC. I think the problem at the end of the day was the deal which the MOD had struck with Taylor Wimpy um, would have been affected simply and solely because National Rail uh, would have wanted a payment um, in respect of the enhanced number of properties that could be developed on the site as a consequence of the access having been improved, uh, what, uh, what is known as a ransom payment. So I think to, to just lay the, the blame at, at the council, I think is, is, is not quite correct. Uh, historically, um, we did fight it. Um, we, at the time of the planning committee, I, I particularly raised it, and it was agreed at the time that should it become a, a problem at some future point, um, it would be revisited. So I just wanted to correct that. Clearly, I understand, having previously held the district economy portfolio, the importance of attracting uh, employment and businesses to the district. Um, I regret to say, I think that McDonald's is, is one company that I probably wouldn't fall over myself to try and get here. Um, I think Councillor Jim Martin was quite correct in, in his comment about the 65 jobs. I think a lot of those jobs are probably there anyway. Uh, and they, they would be, I have no doubt, they would be low paid jobs. And, and probably um, a lot of them, there probably wouldn't be as many full time jobs as perhaps where 
encouraged to believe at the present time. I, I don't intend to um, run through all the points that have been raised uh, so well by uh, all my colleagues, uh, because there's, there's absolutely no point in everybody uh, having to listen to it all being said uh, again. But as, as a, a ward member, um, I wouldn't want my electorate to think that I was uh, sitting on my hands and, and uncertain and not prepared to speak on this one, um, because I am opposed to it. Um, I think that uh, as long as we've got sufficient grounds to be able to uh, defend an appeal, because an appeal is likely, um, although of course we were successful in fending off McDonald's uh, three or four years ago, uh, when they wanted to take premises on um, uh, near, near to the range. So uh, they may not necessarily appeal, but obviously we've got to have the grounds and we've got to stand a reasonable chance the, the dilemma is that, obviously, um, how far do we go to uh, appease um, our local ele electorate? Um, I think in a case such as this, where uh, I'm persuaded to support them um, by really uh, the environmental issues that have been uh, so eloquently put by colleagues, which, as I said earlier, I don't intend to repeat. So I shall certainly be uh, supporting uh, Councillor Fuller's uh, proposal. Thank you, Chairman. And Councillor Collier, Councillor Hollingsby, then I've got Councillor Jim Martin. I'm going to get the officers to sum up um, both proposals. Thank you. Yeah, ju um, just a couple of comments, really. I just wanted to talk um, to, to mention in terms of progress, in terms of the jobs. I, I mean, I, who knows the number of jobs? I, I couldn't confirm one way or another. Um, it would be interesting to know where they might be. But I would say that when I was doing work experience for the Marsh Academy, the McDonald's were very, very helpful and very keen to take on work experience students. And I do remember, I mean, this is this is a few um, years ago, but the, the person who had the franchise, he had the franchise for the Ashford restaurants and the Folkestone restaurants, was somebody who had come up through the ranks and had progress through. And um, that's what the staff were 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 encouraged to do. So I just wanted to make that point. And the other point I was going to say is that um, I'm not a shopper at Tesco's, but I do have home deliveries, but I do go there for my diesel. And I was there yesterday and I had absolutely no trouble getting in or out of Tesco's. And Council Hollingsby, I totally agree. I get petrol there and shop at Waitrose. Anyway, that's beside the point. <laughs> um, Councillor Jim Martin, then I'm going to get the um, the officers to sum up. Thank you. Councillor Jim Martin. Uh, thank you, Chair. It was really just, just to come back on the on the topic of littering. Um, uh, McDonald's um, uh, serve uh, one and a half million servings in polystyrene boxes every day. And the vast majority of that is, it, you know, is just it, it is on our streets. You know, it is it is uh, not only a problem for our coastline and our beaches and our towns. It is such a pervasive problem in this society. Polystyrene wrappers being dropped here. I'm not blaming McDonald's for all of this, but, you know, they are a major contributor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, over to you, Mr. Defia. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, there's there's been an awful lot of um, very good debate going on there, um, and I probably um, won't cover all of it by any means. Um, I think everyone's had a very good debate, and um, the only thing I really wanted to reiterate again was just the, the point um, that there's been an awful lot of discussion about um, this application being McDonald's, which of course we know it is McDonald's, they have put the application in, but we must remind you all that we what we are considering here is a restaurant and a drive through facility, because tomorrow McDonald's could decide actually we're not going to go here and it could be somebody else. So just, just bear that in mind, we cannot make this you know, personal to McDonald's sort of thing. Um, so, you know, the issues about the wrappings and all the rest of it, which I'm also told are actually cardboard, but um, that's another point, um, you know, they're not really relevant to, to the decision, really. Um, so the, um, the, we've had two um, recommendations on the table, one um, to go with the officer's recommendation and one um, 
which is to recommend refusal on grounds of highway safety and that it's not sustainable development. Um, as um, Mr Lloyd has already sort of come back on um, the highway safety issues, I think we would find incredibly difficult to defend on appeal. Um, we, you know, the, the applicants have put in a full transport assessment, which considers um, the impact of this proposal on um, all of the surrounding road network. It's been carried out by, you know, a professional company, and it's been fully assessed by Kent Highways. Um, and as you'll all be aware, the MPPF um, requires us to um, only refuse such things where the um, the impact on on highways is severe, which. Um, it's not officers' um, conclusions on this, and it's not Kent Highway's conclusions on this either. Um, should members decide that they, um, you know, wish to um, refuse planning permission um, along the sort of grounds that you have been talking about, um, what you might want to consider is some more of the um, amenity issues that I think Councillor Mead may have raised earlier on in the discussions. So relating to um, perhaps um, increased activity, whether that's cars, pedestrians, lighting um, and that sort of thing um, from the sort of 24 hour operation um, of, of this, because I, if I correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe the Tesco's is, is opening 24 hours a day at the moment. So this could be above and beyond, you know, what's going on in the um, surrounding area. Um, was there anything else that you particularly wanted me to come back on? I could, or I could quickly comment on the, the jobs um, question that came up quite a while ago. Um, I have checked the statements from McDonald's and, um, or from the applicants and their agents, and it, they don't um, particularly go into detail about how they've, um, they've come up with that number, but I would assume that it does include sort of the wider network um, I must admit that is what I, I had assumed when I read it the first time, um, but, but they don't go into that detail. Um, so I can't comment further on that. Um, yeah, so I think that's, that's all I wanted to say, unless there's anything else that you wanted me to come back on. Thank you, Ms. Steffi. No, I think it was mainly to um, help out the, um, the against, okay. um, against vote on, on reasons, because obviously um, I was struggling with the, uh, with the, the 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 car side of it because of uh, Kent Highway's comments, um, but you mentioned uh, other other um, conditions there or, or, or reasons to object. So um, yeah, so I think that's uh, that's rounded that up uh, quite nicely. So obviously, I have two proposals on the table. Take them in the order I was given. Um, I forget which order that was now. Just finding the paperwork. <laughs> uh, Councillor Wimble, you proposed four, didn't you? Yes. And um, seconded mm -hmm. by Councillor Philip Martin, and, and the against was Councillor Fuller and Councillor Trelaw. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So in that order, first being will be the against vote, because obviously I've got that last. So that was proposed by Councillor Fuller, um, second by Councillor Tre Trelaw to go against the officer's recommendation. Over to you, Kate. Shouldn't you take, sorry, Chairman, shouldn't you take them in the order that they were made? Yeah, that's usually the way, Chair. <laughs> so I'm happy to first. go first. Yes, correct. Going with the officer's recommendation, proposed by Councillor Wimble, seconded by Councillor Philip Martin, and uh, over to you, Gemma. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Brooke. Against. Councillor Collier. Against. Councillor Fuller. Against. Councillor Goddard. For. Councillor Mrs. Hollinsby. Four. Councillor Keane. Against. Councillor Jim Martin. Against. Councillor Philip Martin. Four. Councillor Mead. Against. Councillor Mullard. 
For. Councillor Trelaw. Against. And Councillor Wimble. At four. Five, four, and seven against. Thank you, uh, Kate. So that is that proposal's lost. So we go to the substantive motive of the first one um, with uh, Councillor Fuller proposing and Councillor Trelaw seconding. Um, now we need to be clear on the reasons here as well, Councillor Fuller and Councillor Trelaw. Yeah. Um, Miss Defue, have you got those reasons or do you want them to um, go through them again? Um, them again, Chairman. Yeah, so, so the reasons that I had um, down that Council Fuller uh, had stated were for the highway safety and that it, it wasn't sustainable. Um, I came back and suggested that um, you may struggle with the sort of highway safety aspect um, on appeal. Um, I was suggesting that you might want to look more at the sort of amenity issues that could, could potentially arise around those issues. So whether that's from, um, you know, the impact um, of additional traffic and noise and lighting on, um, on, on residential amenity. Um, I do sort of what I need um, members to do is if, if this, um, if this is voted upon and this, and refusal is um, the way forward then I will need to come back to get some sort of agreed wording from those that have proposed and seconded it and then I from that I can and sort of help you to um, formulate that into a reason for refusal thank you okay Miss Defius the councillors are you all uh, happy with that excellent so like I say proposed councillor Fuller seconding seconded councillor Trelaw thank you Gemma Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Brooke. Four. Councillor Collier. Councillor Collier, you're on mute. Sorry, four. Councillor Fuller. Four. Councillor Goddard. Against. Councillor Mrs Hollinsby. Against. Councillor Keane. Four. Councillor Jim Martin. Four. Councillor Philip Martin. Against. Councillor Mead. Four. Councillor Mullard. Against. Councillor Trelaw. Four. Councillor Wimble. Against. Thank you. <coughs> Seven, four, and five against. Thank you, councillors. That's refused. Thank you very much for a fine debate. Moving on, item five on the uh, list tonight is Y19 is 0546FH9 mm. Victoria Grove, Folkestone, and sorry, Emma Chair. Hall. Sorry, we need to um, sorry, go through the wording for the reason for refusal. Oh. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Good luck. Well, I'd got away with that one. <laughs> Sorry, do you want me to speak? Um, I was waiting for either Councillor okay. Trudor or Trudor to come up with these <laughs> Thank you. Okay. 104 reasons. I mean, I, yeah, I, yeah you, you sort of set, set those, those reasons out, which I think the um, the the I mean I mean this, Gary this is sort of for you but um, <laughs> are you happy with the amenity argument because that does encompass um, some of the other issues that you know we did raise specifically such as yeah. that includes sort of traffic and noise and lighting mm. and and you know maybe we could include litter in that and um, certainly you know I mean I would class air pollution um, as as an amenity issue as well and well-being so residential amenity and well-being in that respect um 
And as far as sustainability goes, it's not great on the environmental front. So I would not call this as an environmentally sustainable business. Um, and, you know, as far as sustainable development goes, we need to be looking at, at that. Um, what, what do you think, Councillor Phil? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, looking at the policies, I would say, um, and uh, the uh, officers can correct me if I'm wrong on this one, which I'm sure I will be, um, that it's going to be SS3, I assume, that we that would uh, link back to what we're saying or what I'm saying about it, the, it not being a sustainable uh, development. Uh, yes, I'm more than happy to include residential amenity, although you will have to remind me which policy number that's under. Um, <laughs> well, Sorry, um, you know, I'm, I'm, we, I think we'll be happy to give you the policy numbers if we can just agree the general... Mm -hmm. uh, Okay. Areas for refusal. So I think at the moment it's um, residential amenity generally um, mm -hmm. and sustainability um, seems yeah. to be key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be my view on it. I have to admit. Um, I think Claire Dedier has got some potential wording that we can then agree with you. Could I ask? Yeah. Can we can we include? Um, uh, you know, even though you say it's not over overarching, can we include the climate and ecological emergency declaration as, as part of that? What, what, as what a, are you doing? As a material consideration. Well, well, we, I think the sustainability clause would cover that. Yeah, yeah, um, that's that's where my thinking was. So you, you'd, you'd use sustainability as which would be a wrap all for if we take sustainability in the round, which is economic, social, and environmental it's part of that thinking, which is what I was driving at, which is it's a, it's a broader consideration, um, which has to be taken in, in light of all other material considerations. But yes, I think sustainability, if that's where members, I think members have voted on sustainability, uh, would pick that up. Yeah, so um, we've been sort of quickly uh, drafting something that we hope in incorporates um, the, the issues you've sort of raised. Um, and we would obviously like to um, have your agreement to finalise the wording, um, mm -hmm. you know, your permission for that. But we were thinking that the wording you, um, you seem to be suggesting is along the lines of uh, the proposed use by virtue of the level of additional vehicle movements, hours of operation and additional lighting would give rise to um, harm to the residential amenity of local residents, harm to highway safety and would would not represent sustainable development. Um, we will obviously finesse the wording, but do, are you happy that that um, really covers the issues you were raising? Sounds good to me. Sounds good Great. to me. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Defia. Thank you, uh, Councillor Fuller, Councillor Trudlaw. Are we happy with that now, uh, Ms. Defia, to move on? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Going back to Y19, 05469 Victoria Grove, Folkestone, and Emma Hawthorne is going to take us through it. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Chair. This proposal is for the change of use of the property from a six bed HMO to a seven bed HMO, and therefore the proposal seeks permission for the use of one additional bedroom within the existing HMO. Next slide, please. As illustrated by the site location plan on the screen, the application site comprises a mid-terrace dwelling on Victoria Grove. Next slide, please. This property is a three-storey dwelling with basement level and comprises a moderate-sized rear garden and small sunken terrace area to the roadside frontage. Next slide, please. The drawings on the screen illustrate the front and rear elevations of the property. No external alterations took place as a result of the proposal. Next slide, please. Retrospective planning permission is sought as internal works to the property to convert it to an HMO have already occurred and been completed. Therefore, the property currently benefits from seven bedrooms. However, the seventh bedroom has not yet been let and only six bedrooms within the property have been occupied under the current lawful use, which is a six bed HMO. 
The applicants now wish to utilise the seventh bedroom in the property and as such have submitted this application for consideration. Next slide, please. The additional bedroom is located within the basement area of the property and this is shown on the left hand drawing on the screen. The property has been converted to a high standard and has lawfully been operating as a six page HMO under permitted development rights since May 2019. Following the completion of the change of use to the HMO, the property was issued with building control approval and an HMO license for six bedrooms. Officers therefore consider the lawful use of the existing property to be a six bed HMO, which by virtue of its size and layout is suitable for HMO accommodation and as such a license has been granted for such a use by the council. Therefore, the change of use would not increase the number of HMOs in the locality. Next slide, please. As mentioned, the current use of the property to a seven bed HMO did not include any external alterations. The proposal is therefore not considered to have an impact on the character and appearance of the host property or the wider street scene. As no external alterations were undertaken to the pre-existing building to accommodate the change of use to HMO, there is no result of any additional overshadowing or overlooking impacts onto neighbouring properties. In relation to increased noise and disturbance, the property is lawfully being used as a six bed HMO and therefore the impact of one additional occupant from the additional bedroom proposed is not considered to be likely or sorry is not considered likely to be significant. Next slide please. The bedrooms are considered to be of a sufficient size and meet or exceed the space standards. All habitable rooms would include windows providing an outlook. It is considered that the property has been converted to a high standard and therefore provides a very good standard of accommodation for occupants. The proposal promotes an acceptable level of amenity for current and future occupants of the property. Next slide, please. This is illustrated by the previous image and this current image on the screen, which shows the bedrooms within the property. Next slide, please. Officers consider that the HMO benefits from a reasonable level of private outdoor amenity space to the rear of the property. And this is accessed through the door currently on the image. This allows occupants the use of the communal garden while providing space for washing lines and other outdoor equipment. The application site is also found within a town centre location and therefore occupants would be in close proximity and walking distance of parks and outdoor public amenity spaces. With regards to highway matters, the application site lies within a town centre location and therefore is considered to be within a highly sustainable location. In this case, the impact from one additional occupant is not considered to be severe and the harm caused is not considered to be significant enough to warrant refusal. The submitted drawings have not illustrated space for cycle parking. However, it is considered that there's a sufficient space within the site and this can be secured by a planning condition. The submitted drawings don't illustrate space for storage of bins or recycling boxes on collection days. However, it is considered that there's a sufficient space within the site to accommodate this. Bin storage was discussed with the owner of the property when granting the current HMO license for the six bed HMO. And it was agreed that the basement area would be used for bin storage with the bin bags being brought up to the pavement level on bin collection days. The council has not received any complaints regarding rubbish or bin storage at this property to date. With regards to fire safety, the application property has been completely refurbished and as such complies with current building and fire safety regulations. All HMO rooms and kitchens have fire doors. There's new fire alarm system in the property which is required to be tested weekly and the property currently holds the HMO license as mentioned previously. Final slide please. This image shows another um, view of the kitchen um, to be used by all um, of the HMO occupants. Overall officers recommend the proposal for conditional approval as set out in section 10 of the committee report. Thank you chair that concludes my presentation. Thank you uh, Ms. Hornform, very good thank you. Councillors I have Councillor Hollingsby. Uh, thank you chairman. Um, <clears throat> I'm not really a fan of HMOs, but in this case, I think it's 
I'm very pleased with the very comprehensive report and I'd like to move the recommendation. I think an additional room, this standard of accommodation in the town centre is excellent and I'm very happy to move the recommendation. And Councillor Hollingsby, you got a seconder? Happy to second, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Philip Martin and Councillor Fuller to speak next. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm with Councillor Hollingsby on this one. I'm not usually a fan of HMOs, but I mean, that kitchen's bigger than my daughter's bedroom. Um, <laughs> and every single one of those rooms looks lovely. Um, I, I appreciate that, obviously, Folkestone had the objection uh, on the grounds that they've sort of worried about fire safety standards, that kind of thing. Um, and I'd like to think that, that that's been addressed in this report. Certainly, you know, the, the weekly fire alarm tests and so on sound like uh, a very good step in the right direction. And, and looking at the room sizes, if I've read the report right, they all exceed the minimum. Um, so it's very little. Uh, there's very little to find fault with in this, um, if anything at all. Um, I don't like that yellow tea towel. There you go. I found a fault. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you, Councillor Fuller. You are not too keen on yellow myself. Um, but moving on, um, Councillor Mead. Thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, I am on Folkestone Town Council planning. Um, our, our main worries, as it always is with HMOs, um, is that quite often, um, as much as conditions are put on that only eight people shall live in the property, uh, we have found, and I've got an HMO in my road, um, that the amount of people um, that move in initially suddenly increases when those people have got partners, and that's when we have a problem. Um, also, what worries me about this one, I, and believe me, I've had my share uh, over the years of living in shared um, houses, especially in London, um, but we always had a proper lounge to have a, a communal area, not sitting at a breakfast bar. We actually had somewhere where all of the people, should they so wish, could actually integrate properly with each other. Um, and it always worries me with HMOs, and I must admit this one is looking very smart, um, but it is bedsit land, um, and that can cause problems. And believe me, we've got experiences of it here, uh, and we're talking about local immunity again. If any of them smoke, they're not allowed to do it in the house. They all stand outside the front door, and all their cigarette butts go into the street. And what do we do? It's the residents that have the problem again. So we have um, issues with HMOs. I think six bedrooms um, with maybe a communal, a proper communal lounge would be far more acceptable than just to put everyone into bedsit land with a, a, you know, a kitchen that they can use. And the other thing that worries me is keeping the bin bags downstairs in the basement. Um, the basement is where this um, new bedroom is going to be. Um, and knowing that we only have bin collections every two weeks, um, I'm imagining that that poor person after two weeks of bin bags in the heat uh, will not be able to open their windows. Um, I'm actually rather concerned about the bin storage uh, for this area as well. Um, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Me, Councillor Trelaw. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, I think this does look like a very high, high standard HMO. Um, I, I'm, I'm never quite sure about HMOs myself. Um, I saw, you know, the one go up um, a couple of doors up from me, the one that uh, Councillor Mead uh, referred to, because we are we are on the same street. Um, and you know that that was a, of a reasonable high standard as well. But on on the bin issue, one thing um, I, I, I guess I'd um, echo Councillor Mead's concerns there, and it's only because. Um, well, in particular, I think it was only about a week ago that, um, no, uh, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, this HMI up the road, um, their bins were just completely overflowing. Their provision um, wasn't enough for the number of people in there. Granted, I think it may have been after maybe one or two people had moved in, um, but this poor resident <laughs> was sort of trying to find um, other people's bins that um, he could put some of their overflow rubbish in. And in fact, I saw the owner of that property up the road um, taking away some of the recycling 
himself. So even though the council hasn't received any complaints on, on this six bed HMO um, to date, to say that there isn't an, an existing problem or that it's not gonna um, get a little bit more um, you know, awkward uh, when you add another person in there. Um, so, so that's my, that, that is a concern. It doesn't just, it doesn't seem to be addressed um, very well. Um, but as I said, the standard is high. Um, I think there's a market and a need for um, this kind of accommodation. Um, it's in a sustainable location. Um, there's a condition in there about cycling, uh, cycling um, cycle storage. Um, so I'm all right with that. Um, I think on the whole, I'm, I'm minded to approve. It seems like a, um, a reasonable uh, request. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Trelaw. Yeah, I think um, everybody would agree on the spec. You know, credit to the applicant for a, a, a tidy, well sought, um, decorated property. Um, so well done on that. No other councillor indicating to speak. I have one proposal proposed by Councillor Hollinsby, seconded by Councillor Philip Martin to go with the officer's recommendation of approval. Over to you, Gemma. Thank you. It's Kate. Thank you. Uh, Kate, sorry, I had to get it wrong <laughs> once. Councillor Brick. Against. Councillor Collier. For. Councillor Fuller. For. Councillor Goddard. For. Councillor Mrs Hollinsby. For. Councillor Keane. Against. Councillor Jim Martin. For. Councillor Philip Martin. For. Councillor Mead. Against. Councillor Mullard. For. Councillor Trelaw. For. Councillor Wimble. For. Thank you. Nine, four, three against. Excellent, thank you, uh, Kate. That application is approved. Moving on to the last application of the evening, item six, Y190016, land adjoining 86 to 88 Tontine Street, Folkestone, and Helena Payne is going to take us through it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, so uh, this is uh, land adjoining 86 to 88 Tontine Street. It's the erection of a part three storey, part five storey building comprising 45 studio apartments with associated access, parking and communal garden. Um, members will recall that the application was considered in, in detail <clears throat> at the October Planning and Licensing Committee, where it was resolved to grant planning permission subject to conditions and a section 106 agreement. Um, however, following this resolution, it came to light that the viability report, um, the, assess the assessment of which was included within the original assessment of the, of the proposal in October, had not been made publicly available due to an unfortunate administra administrative ever error. Members will note, as included within the officer's report at paragraph 4.3, that the National Planning Policy Guidance states that all viability assessments must be publicised along with other information. And so we have since rectified this error and reconsulted in relation to the viability matters only. The application remains unchanged from any previous, from that previously considered in its entirety. Even the matters in relation to viability have previously been assessed and those too remain unchanged. It really is in respect of this technical error that we revisit it again tonight. <clears throat> the previous case officer's report is attached to the new report and all matters are the same. I have enclosed the previous slides to refresh memory and we'll go through those now. Next slide, please. Um, so um, you will recall the site location um, central Folkestone location and fronting Tontine Street and St. Mark, St. Michael Street. Next slide, please. Uh, so some photo images of the site location. Next slide, please. 
and from uh, Tontine Street as well, um, neighbouring properties um, in proximity to the site. Next slide, please. And the site facing, uh, fronting Tontine Street, but you can see the housing behind um, at St Michael Street there. Next slide, please. And again, um, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Um, this is the, the view from St. Michael Street, and we can see that the, the character of the street scene is slightly different from that on Tontine Street with two-storey development being prominent. Next slide, please. Um, immediate neighbour to the site. Next slide, please. This is a photo montage of the um, St. Michael Street elevation. Um, just to refresh memory again. Next slide, please. <laughs> And now we have a selection of slides um, which show the floor layouts of the apartments. Um, I have set out within the officer's report the size of each of these units clearly in a table form. Next slide, please. And again, next slide. First floor there, next slide. Second floor, next slide. Third floor, next slide. Fourth floor, next slide. And finally, part fifth floor fronting onto St. Michael Street, next slide. Okay, um, members should note that further, um, before I continue through these slides, members should note that further um, expansion uh, has been given to the viability report within the recent report and following receipt of further representation submitted in respect of the viability matters, all additional representations are set out clearly in the officer's report and addressed in full within the appraisal section. Um, concerns have included a variety of matters in relation to the to viability, but uh, one main key point that came through all of those is the need for the council to be transparent and hence the reason for revisiting it here today at committee. Officers are confident that the councillors were provided with all relevant detail during the um, in during and in advance of the October meeting and no new information has been brought forward today. Um, these following slides are, are really just um, cross sections showing the development um, within both St Michael Street and Tontine Street in relation to other development in the area. Next slide, please. Um, we've got some elevational detail. Um, this one's the Tontine Street elevation. Next slide, please. And the St Michael Street elevation. Next slide, please. And a further cross section. Um, I think that's the last slide. So um, in summary, officers remain of the view as the viability report was submitted to justify the shortfall of the on-site affordable housing, only that an off-site contribution would be the best option given the circumstances of the site, and that off-site provision would continue to be secured by a section 106. For the reasons set out within the most recent officer's report and the October 2020 committee report, it remains that planning permission should be granted subject to the same conditions as agreed previously and subject to a section 106, which all details are set out within both officers' reports. Thank you. Excellent, thank you very much for that. Uh, councillors, I have Councillor Wimble. Thank you, Chairman. A um, Couple of things on this one. First of all, I think it's very proper for the council to bring this back uh, due to the fact that there was uh, a lack of some of the information. Um, I also want to clear up a few points that uh, members of the planning committee were sent emails and letters from an individual who I won't name stating that I knew the applicant very well and was a personal friend of mine. I, I'd just like to clear that up. I've never met the man, don't know the man, never spoken to the man. So a local um, website, let's just call it that, uh, got that very wrong and they do like to stir things up a little bit. Um, I'm not changed my opinion on this at all. I think it's a lovely proposal. I'm more than happy to move that we go with the original recommendation for passing and uh, would hope that I've got someone who will second me on this. I happily second it, Mr Chairman. I was very much in favour of it before and I haven't changed my mind either. 
Thank you, uh, Councillor Martin. And our next councillor I've got to speak, Councillor Mead. Hello, thank you, Chair. And I haven't changed my mind on this one. I still object to it. It's too much. It's too many in a small space. Mm. It's going to affect the local residents in Michael Street. They've got uh, balconies overlooking as they go up and down the streets. Um, and I've also noticed this time, which I didn't notice last time, that um, in order to bring the amount of uh, apartments down last time, um, they've taken the bathrooms out of the studio flats. They've only got a shower now. So I'm sorry, I, I've not changed my mind on this. And as for the affordable housing not being there, the question for me always is, why do they put these forward if they don't think that they can actually go along with our planning um, policies when it's regarding affordable housing. Yeah, they're quite happy to make money, but we need that affordable housing here. If that affordable housing had actually been at the correct amount, I would have probably been far more um, lenient with this one. But uh, as it stands, I'd, I will not be voting for. Thank you, Councillor Mead. Any other councillor wishing to speak? No, in that case, I have one proposal, proposed by Councillor Wimble, seconded by Councillor Philip Martin to go with the officer's recommendation of approval. Over to you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Brooke. Four. Councillor Collier. Four. Councillor Fuller. Against. Councillor Goddard. Four. Councillor Mrs Hollinsby. Four. Councillor Keane. Against. Councillor Jim Martin. Abstain. Councillor Philip Martin. Four. Councillor Mead. Against. Councillor Mullard. Four. Councillor Trelaw. Against. Councillor Wimble. Four. Thank you. Seven, four, four against, one abstention. Thank you, Kate. That uh, is uh, approved. Moving on to the last piece of business tonight, item 11 on your agendas, councillor. Councillors, formal enforcement action and compliance update reports. And uh, Miss Patchin, Lisette Patchin is going to take us through it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Carry on. Yep. Lisette, yep. Good evening. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Hi. Um, yes, <clears throat> this is um, a report to provide councillors with an update um, that was requested by one of the councillors in terms of um, enforcement notices that have been um, served, uh, that were approved by committee and what the progress is on, on them. So, um, the report basically sets out um, some background to the different types of notices that the council can serve and the number of complaints that we've had um, in since April 2019, the different types of notices that have been served and the appendix then basically sets out a summary of the enforcement notices um, that are still current so members can see an updated an up-to-date position on them and uh, members are asked to agree and note the report as it's for information only. Thank you Chairman. Thank you uh, Ms Patching. Councillor Collie you want to make a comment? Thank you Chairman. Yes I, I should just like to as the uh, member who requested this information I, I, I hope my colleagues will agree with me that it's um, enormously useful uh, and I should like to uh, personally thank uh, Lizette Patching for having uh, collected all the information together because I'm, I'm sure it wasn't a simple task, but I hope everyone will agree that it, it's, it's useful to us all. Thank you. Yes, um, totally agree with you, Councillor Collier. You seem to have stolen the script. I was going to say exactly that. And um, thank you for bringing this to members' attention. Most useful. It, it's there in black and white. Every member can look at it and um, see the latest updates. 
So, um, you know, thank you, members. Thank you, uh, um, Councillor Collier. Councillor Hollingsby, you want to make a comment? <laughs> Yes, thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I'd just like to reiterate um, Councillor Collier's comments. It's really good and something we've probably been wanting for, for some time. And thank you very much for bringing it forward. And um, I look forward to seeing it updated. I just wanted to just <coughs> raise, because there are a couple, um, Little Woodland Farm, Limminge. I, I would just like to, uh, and I'll be contacting Ms Patchin, that I have had an update or a follow up from that. And I'm not sure that the um, the action has ceased, but um, it, uh, and that's good to see that we've we've got this report in front of us. So thank you. Yes, again, thank you, Miss Patchin, and every all the councillors happy to note that. Yes. Thank yep. you very much. Um, no other business tonight, councillor. Chairman, would it be an I? I do just have a proposal and a seconder for that. Okay, propose. I'll propose it, chairman. Proposed Councillor Collier, seconding Councillor Jim Martin. Um, over to you, Kate, for a vote. Councillor Brook. Councillor Collier. For. Councillor Fuller. For. Councillor Goddard. For. Councillor Mrs. Hollinsby. For. Councillor Keane. For. Councillor Jim Martin. Or Councillor Philip Martin. Or Councillor Mead. For Councillor Mullard. Or Councillor Trelaw. Or Councillor Wimble. Uh, for thank you. That's unanimous. Thank you for that, and thank you very much. Before we disappear, councillors, I'd just like to say a few words. Um, obviously, as you know, it's been a rubbish year for us all. Um, I just want to thank you, the members for making these meetings as, as go as good as they can possibly can through Zoom, <laughs> and also our excellent and exceptional team of, um, of planners and uh, officers. Obviously, I'd like to wish you all a very merry, merry Christmas and a happy COVID-free New Year, and uh, hope to see you all early January. I think the next one's about the 12th, so um, no, you know, uh, they're coming around rapid. And hopefully see you all in person very, very soon. Take care. Be good. Be safe. Drive home safely. Good night. Uh, goodbye. And the same to you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Christmas, everyone. Merry Thank Christmas, you. everyone. Yeah. Goodbye Thank now. You. I can't Go promise on. to be good, though. <laughs> Thank you. Before you go... You can't be good to stay. <laughs>